All right, here we go. So first question, should hygienists buy their own equipment? What do you guys think? Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Uh, I buy my own equipment all the time. I buy those great hand, air polishing hand pieces that you pointed out. Um, like I buy interesting scalers to see if I want to order them in mass for the clinic. Uh, like like new products, I always try a sample first before I work it through my clinic and tr and order it. So I think like you know having your own equipment first of all gives you more control over your own you know practice. Uh, so I'm I'm all for it. Trish. Go next. Um, only personal equipment is a, is the only thing that I've ever bought before, uh, as far as like loops, light, uh, chair, that sort of thing. Um, but I th I think it's it really it's situational as whether or not you should buy it as a hygienist. In other words, if you've got great equipment and you've got a a dentist who doesn't mind you investing in the hygiene department then you know that's one situation. If you're an out of work hygienist though and you're trying to maybe you never know where you're going to be either temping in, what kind of equipment they're going to have, or you want to set yourself apart from other hygienists, maybe it is better to have an armamentarium of your own equipment that shows, hey, I'm really serious about you know being a hygienist. So that's personally I um, just when whenever I feel the need to order something I, I do the Hey, we need this, and it usually gets ordered. It might not be immediately, but we <laughs> uh, we we do that. But uh, yeah, I I think that the way that um, some of the larger uh, companies where they where you can order supplies from restrict hygienists, so which is very unfortunate. In other words, you can't set up an account with Shine. Um, mm -hmm. They would prefer for you to go through. The, uh, your dentist that you work for to order um, scalers and, and that sort of thing and um, I, I think that that is a little bit uh, antiquated. Yeah. Andrew? Yeah, well, you know, I, no, I, don't, no, I don't think that hygienists should be required to buy their own equipment, but obviously for the reasons that you guys are mentioning, sometimes we just have to. So for me, since I like to do restorative, in the past, I've purchased, they have these um, acorn burnishers. I don't know if you guys are familiar with what those are, but um, it said the ball burnisher actually helps you with the, with grooves and secondary grooves and stuff like that. It's just really helpful for me, but the offices that you know I've been in, they've never supplied them. Working in a big corporate um, entity that I am now, you know, it's a, it's a lot harder to get certain things. Like those, of course, I have. The basics, of course, you're always going to have. But if there was going to be a new product, well, we have a committee that reviews all these products first, and then if they approve it, then we can order it. And it's you know, I, and I understand why they do that in, in a you know corporate setting, but it's just unfortunate, I guess, that um, you know, in the private practice setting, you really, you know, it's hard to beg your doctor to to try something out. And the the reps that come by, you know, they're usually pretty accommodating if you. Beg and ask for stuff, um, but it's but no, I don't think that they should they should have to purchase their own stuff. Yeah, I don't think I think they should buy it if if they need it, and the doctor or the owner, whoever it is, is not willing to buy it. I don't think it's a make or break thing. Like if you if you have a pretty good job overall, but the equipment is not that great. I blogged about this before, and if you work full time and you basically take maybe two bucks an hour off your pay that's gonna give you about four grand a year to buy stuff and that's that's quite a bit so I asked hygienists a lot like if you rather have or get paid say like thirty five bucks an hour with you know very good equipment like everything you want or you get paid thirty bucks thirty eight bucks an hour and work with crap instruments I mean the vast majority say I'd rather make thirty five and have a nice a nice day you know so it's really three bucks, you know, out of your pay. If you really have to, obviously, if the doctor is willing to buy everything for you, that's great, you know. But I think in most cases, the office is not going to buy exactly what you want. So you're really just going to supplement what you really want. So it's not a huge purchase, I don't think. And I've had my battles over the years. Oh, I guess battles, you say. Uh, you know, doctors not willing to buy stuff, and we all know having, you know, old scalers and worn out tips is just makes your day really crappy basically 
So I don't think hygienists should have to buy anything, but in reality, I think as a personal thing, they should to make their day much better. But do you find that happens quite a bit? I do. Oh, yeah, all the places I've temp like when I first started off, I started off, I I worked part time for a one doctor practice, and I also temp for like six months. So I saw like a big range, you know, of of different practices and. The place that I worked at part time, you know, she she wasn't willing to really buy stuff, and the whole time I was there, I really like talked to her a lot. The other two hygienists kind of gave up on it, and then I I left there in six months after six months, and I gave her a six week notice, and I actually found a replacement for her, you know, and um, but I talked to her all the time, and she finally said, okay, put a list together. I put a list together, and. Like two weeks before I left, she bought all new instruments. <laughs> but it was a battle, you know. So like, yeah, like so that range of places that I experience is like, you know, places that are really, really great and places that are just horrible, you know. So what? What finally broke her? Sorry to keep monopolizing yeah. your time, but what finally broke her as far as you just like you kept explaining, 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 or what? Yeah, I, I, part of it is bothering her, I guess, a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But I also like kept explaining because she had a, a Pro Select piezo scaler. They're pretty expensive, and they have like a one universal tip, which is pretty good scaler and good tip. But we only had three three tips, three tips for three hygienists. You know, so I used to tell her. I said, "Look, I used to, you know I had my own instruments from school too that I brought in. So I was like, um, you know, I have to like kind of like time myself. Like like I say, I know I have SRP coming up or a period maintenance patient. It's going to be difficult." I like try to predict, like, okay, hopefully this person is an easy profi because I'm going to use the crappy ones on her and then save the good ones for this patient. So it's like a constant back and forth, so it's like a pain, you know? And stuff like that, I think, kind of broke her down. But, but she had a steric machine, too, you know? So it's like, come on. Yeah, it's very expensive, right? So, yeah, you, you, you brought up something about using, having to, you know, work with, well, you didn't say directly, but with other hygienists that are using equipment and maybe you have like uh, some hygienists that prefer some equipment or that um, maybe don't sharpen the same way you do and you maybe not want, wanting to even share your equipment <laughs> not saying that you know that doesn't happen in our office because we're pretty good about doing that but um, some hygienists do complain that well I want to keep myself my, my things separate and and there's a certain way that they need to be sterilized, especially some of the more advanced scalers that they have these days with the coatings on them that they have. You can't, you have to keep them in cassettes, and you can't really, uh, you know, put them in the ultrasonic just in a little, you know, uh, bun hair bundle like you can, you know, with maybe some of the the crap equipment, like you right. said. So, yeah. You know, uh, so so there's a handling issue that comes into play there too. I think w when um, it comes to ownership of the equipment. Do you, will hygienists take better care of their equipment because they do have an ownership to it too? That might even be a factor of whether or not a hygienist should buy their own equipment or, you know, or share it communally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's a, a problem in my office because it's pretty high pace, you know, pretty large office and uh, things definitely get beat up in the lab. <laughs> and uh, okay. I, I've told them many times with certain things like don't put this here, don't do this, and then this is a temp that day. I'm not there, and it gets you know trash, you know. But, <laughs> That's yeah. what that two dollars an hour is for. Exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I gave up. Like when I started with a company that I'm with now, Cool Smiles. The first office that I worked in, they uh, they had pretty worn out instruments, and after all that that experience with temping, I just I was like, I asked for new instruments. They all I could buy was like the Benko brand, which is pretty cheap, and uh, I was like, "That's it, I'm done." <laughs> and I just bought brand new PDT at the time instruments, a bunch of sets. And uh, ever since then, it's just been so much easier to. I don't have to beg for anything. I just have my own stuff, and you know. Can you guys talk about some of the stuff that you do buy on your own? I can see loops definitely, like. I don't see why dentists buy their their hygienist loops. I think I think the hygienists should buy their own loops and and lights and stuff. Hey, I'll take the free though. <laughs> yeah. That's all I've bought for myself is just yeah. personal equipment like that. Um, 
So yeah, I, I haven't actually gone gone and bought a Cavatron myself, but you know, I I'm, I actually, if I have if I can find you know four thousand dollars sitting around, I might get myself a new <laughs> ProfiJet. Mine yeah. mine has uh, it, it's special. Yeah. <laughs> One of mine, the ones that I use right now. Mm -hmm. Daniel, what do you buy me? You said scalers, right? The air polisher. Yeah, the air polisher. Um, new scalers. Uh. I bought some of the uh, different Profi powders for the air polishers just to try them out, mm -hmm. and uh, I actually, I've actually um, gotten us through that. I realized that they're all kind of about the same, except for the, uh, you know, super gingival baking soda or you know the carbonate ones yeah. or um, the sub gingival glycine powder. And instead of, and because of like experimenting with that, I was able to realize, you know what, I'm just going to use regular baking soda. You can get the MSDS for. You know, one dollar a pound Arm and Hammer baking soda, and just use that for your profi yeah, jet. It's the same. So what? So what about the uh, the flavoring? I know this is off topic, but well, it's always tastes like crap. <laughs> Even okay. it, it may smell hate. nice, it still tastes bad. <laughs> but I, I figured I just started using. It. I figured I I maybe like throw a sprig of I don't know mint of something in there or something. <laughs> I'm still playing around with it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, when you when you have to buy your own, just go get the arm and hammer. Why not? Yeah. The... <laughs> A little bag of potpourri. Yeah, you can just drop it in there. <laughs> <laughs> A little aromatherapy. Just yeah. put it under their nose, right? Yeah. So it's... <laughs> Vicks. <laughs> I used the uh, calcium carbonate for a while, the Air and Go brand. It's pretty expensive, though, and it's no taste, supposedly. But I still have yeah. patients go, oh, what is that? Is that what's chalk, basically? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, but I, I switched back to the sodium bicarbonate. I just got, like, a, I use Parkel brand, you know, mint, mm -hmm. whatever. It's good enough. It works well. It's a decent, you know, decent price. So, so Andrew, what do you buy? You mentioned a couple of things already, but any hygiene stuff? No? Well, when I um, went to my first clinic, it was a brand new clinic and it was pretty stocked with everything I needed. I've been pretty fortunate, actually. Um, just the restorative instruments, I've done a couple of those. As far as products, I've never really had to purchase, you know, any of my own sealant materials or anything like that. And, and which is, I was kind of surprised by the question a little bit, just the prevalence of it. Apparently, I don't know if it's like an East Coast, West Coast thing or if it's a you know, maybe Washington is, is just way different. Um, or I've just been very fortunate working for the companies I've chosen to work for. But, you know, hopefully I'll never have to run into that problem. You know? <laughs> yeah. I think it's a wide range out there of, you know, mm -hmm. employers willing to buy and not buy. And I think I think some of it, too, is, is um, to stick up for the doctor just for a second. <laughs> I think sometimes hygienists maybe just, they see something flashy and new and they want it, you know. And they may end up you know, buying something for the hygienist and they don't use it. You know, like, oh, you, you don't use that air polisher anymore or whatever it is, you know. It's like, it costs two grand, you know. <laughs> That's a conversation in itself. What should a dentist, you know, pay for as far as a hygienist? It's a lot of interesting avenues there. As far as what? What do you mean? You know, like product C CE, oh, yeah, yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. You know, a lot of people ask, you know, should my dentist pay for their my license renewal, things like that. Yeah. A right, future question right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I buy a lot of stuff, but uh, for me, like some of the stuff I buy is is to do blog posts on, you know, product reviews. Um, but even before that, I buy a lot of stuff. When I I just start, I started with the hand instruments, and then I started buying my own Cavatron tips, and then you know, since then I've I bought three Cavatrons, uh, like three piezo scalers, Isolite, of course, all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> I buy my own uh, sealing material because one they use I don't like. Well, I won't say that. Uh, it's Clint Pro, which is good. I mean, I like it, but uh, I use the uh, Ultra Dent Hydro Seal. But that's the second question about sealing, so I won't get into that. But I enjoy that. That's, to me, it's much easier to use. Um, I got a saddle chair, loops, light. Um, I got a lot of stuff. I don't know stuff that I've I've bought just to try and do product reviews that don't work. I mean, so many things that I bought that don't work. <laughs> um, a lot of isolation products. I was testing stuff uh, like the fast dams. They call it. I think it's called. So, yeah, just sweet flex saliva rejectors. I don't know a bunch of stuff that. Do you have a blacklist of stuff that just doesn't work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all it's all in the club in the big box. Yeah. 
Uh, all right. So, any any more thoughts on that? I think we kind of agree in general that hygienists shouldn't be forced to buy stuff, but if kind of lacks, you know, if you need something and it's going to make your day much better, I say, say go for it. You know, you know, I'll spend like a thousand bucks a year. You know, <laughs> it's not asking too much, I guess. All right.